Good morning, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. I thought we're expecting a few more people, but I know you all have busy lives and things to do. Um, thank you for coming today. Happy Friday. Happy start of NFL football season. That's why we're all wearing jerseys today. Um, my name is Ashley Harper. I'm the lead counselor here, and I'm also the counselor that works with students who receive special education services. So I work in all three grade levels. We have our sixth grade counselor, Anna Blevins, seventh grade, Leslie Cole, and Jude Missick stepped out for a second, but he'll be right back. He's our eighth grade counselor. So today, the purpose of this workshop is really to try to help um, dispel any myths, maybe feel, help you feel a little bit more at ease with coming to middle school because middle school can be um, a bit of a roller coaster. How many of you are first time middle school parents? <laughs> awesome, okay. And I know some people that are coming are just first time to Loudoun County Middle School. So we wanna try to um, explain some things that happen in Harper Park and Loudoun County that may not happen in other areas of the country. So we're gonna start with just a funny little video, lighthearted video, movie you guys have probably seen, but it, it explains a lot about what happens to your kids when they get to be middle school age. So, how was the first day of school? It was fine, I guess. I don't know. Do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? Did you guys pick up on that? Sure, mm -hmm. yeah, something's wrong. We're gonna find out what's happening, but we'll need support. Signal the husband. <clears throat> <laughs> What did she say? What? Oh, oh, sorry, sir. No one was listening. Is it garbage night? Uh, we left the toilet seat up. What? What is it, woman? What? Signal him again. <laughs> ah, so, Riley, how was school? Riley, you gotta be kidding me. For this, we gave up that Brazilian helicopter pilot. <laughs> was great, all right? What was that? I thought you said we were gonna act casual. Riley, is everything okay? <sighs> Sir, she just rolled her eyes at us. All right, make a show of force. I don't wanna have to put the foot down. No, not the foot. Riley, I do not like this new attitude. Oh, I'll show you attitude. Oh, no, man. no, 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 breathe. What is your problem? Just leave me alone. Sir, reporting high levels of sass. Take it to DEFCON 2. DEFCON 2. I don't know where this disrespectful attitude came from. You want a piece of this, Bob? Yeah. Look, look. Prepare the foot. Keys to safety position. Ready to launch on your command, sir. Just shut up. Fire. That's it. Go to your room. The foot is down. The foot is down. Yeah. Good job, gentlemen. That could have been a disaster. Well, that was a disaster. <laughs> Come, fly with me, Gatshina. Can I just say I'm offended how accurate this is? <laughs> <laughs> with the dad? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, so I have an 8th grader, 7th grader, and a 5th grader in my house, and that looks very familiar. Um, but that's just kind of a funny way of some of the things that you may be already experiencing. Anybody have the high levels of sass yet? Come yeah, into that. We've had it for a while. Okay. <laughs> well, it's going to ebb and flow, which is good news. It won't always be um, that bad. But they do start to shift from being really um, interested in what's going on with you and um, uh, neighborhood and sports and the things that they have always done. And then it becomes a little bit more concentrated on friends and what do my friends think of me? How is this gonna look when I go to school, you know, when I wear this to school? So things do shift a little bit when it comes to <coughs> things they really care about. And it's hard it's for, as a parent sometimes to keep that in mind as I'm dealing with the high levels of SAS and um, really trying to help them feel confident when they go to school and dealing with some of the things that come along. We're gonna talk about some of the stuff that they're gonna be dealing with as their days go on in middle school. So some of the nuts and bolts about middle school in, Har in uh, Harbor Park and Loudoun County in general, you guys have probably already figured out, we have in each grade level a dean, a counselor, and a secretary. The dean is like the principal for that grade level. They help keep everybody safe. They make sure everybody is following the rules. They are in charge of all the grade level supervision, so they're always in the lunchroom when the sixth graders are in lunchroom, the sixth grade dean is in there, um, the counselor is in there usually, and uh, other administrators too. 
The counselor is there similar to what they were in elementary school. So they really for anything that the child needs, social emotionally, um, question about a class, schedule change, they're having an issue with a teacher, maybe something happened at home that's making them worry, they can stop in to see the counselor for anything. Um, the counselor in the grade level has a little mailbox right on their door and they've got little slips of paper that the kids can fill out and then the counselor will go find them as soon as they can. We also have an online way to request to see your counselor this year. They just log into LCPS Go. If they wanna see Ms. Blevins, they click on her icon. If they wanna see me, they click on mine and it pops up in our email so we know that there's a child that wants to see us. And that makes it really easy for the kids. They don't have to be seen filling out a note at the counselor's office. Um, sometimes that's a little hard for kids to do. And then the secretary, um, is she's, she kind of keeps the house running. If you have to pick your kid up early for a dentist appointment, if they're coming in late and they've got a note, they're always gonna stop at the house secretary and she's gonna arrange for them to have a pass to leave class early. Um, one thing I do wanna say, if you need to get a message to your child, for example, I had a parent leave me a message the other day, can you make sure he gets on the bus with so-and-so instead of so-and-so? As the counselor, it is not guaranteed I will get that message before the day is over. So your house secretary is the best bet for those kinds of things. If something needs to happen that day, um, as far as message for your child, just a note for that. We also do um, teams. You guys might have heard your kids talk about what team they are, are on. It's on their schedule, upper left corner. In sixth grade, it'll say whirlwind, lightning, or thunder, seventh storm, twister, or bolt, eighth jet stream, tsunami, or cyclone. What that really means, um, it, a long time ago it meant that they all had the same science, English, math, and history teacher. And that's what made the kids be on a team. The county is kind of, we've kind of evolved because we've gotten so large, it is very difficult to keep kids purely on those teams with those particular teachers, but it does give them a sense of identity. So if we do anything by team, like sometimes our field trips are split by team, then the, you know, the, the thunder are always gonna go together on the same day. And we try to, we're gonna try to do more team building activities, maybe like once a quarter, so they can just do fun stuff with their team. So for the kids, that's all it really means. But for the adults, for the teachers, um, the teaming is really important. So we do um, interdisciplinary teams. So those whirlwind and thunder, those teachers meet together every week and they talk about, they commonly plan so hopefully your child's not having an English, a social studies, and a science test all in the same day because those teachers have coordinated and they're trying to spread it out so as not to stress the kids out. Um, they also um, plan common assessments. And the collaborative learning teams means great, um, the subject specific. So all of history six, they all have a planning together as well. And so they will develop their assessments they will look at the um, data from those assessments and then they will adjust if they need to. If 50% you know, of the kids got question 18 wrong, they're gonna throw that out or they're gonna revisit that concept and make sure they get it. So those teams are really important as the adults in the building. Kids don't really know what goes on behind the scenes at those teams. Okay. And also, that's when we talk about interventions for kids. So if we're having an issue, if a child's having an issue in a particular class, paying attention or um, you know, staying on task, the teachers might share ideas as to how, they are, how they're being successful in their class. Let's see if we can work on that in another class. So there's lots of discussion on making sure the kids are okay in their classes as well. Another team that's new this year is the United Mental Health Team. We were fortunate in Loudoun County that our school board um, adopted a budget that allowed for an additional middle school counselor in every middle school in Loudoun County this year. So we have four, as you can see, and we've traditionally had three here at Harper Park, one for each grade level. So now we have four. So each school was kind of tasked with, what do we do with four counselors and three grade levels? And that's kind of how the position evolved that I'm in where I'm working with the kids, the special education population, um, across all grade levels, trying to support them, um, taking some of the kids that really usually lots of times take a lot of our time, I'm trying to take that off of them so they can work with kids that maybe sometimes wouldn't even be on the radar and give them more time. On the Unified Mental Health Team is also our school psychologist, that's Beth Weatherford back there in the Art Monk jersey. <laughs> And she um, unfortunately has a couple other schools she's assigned to, but she spends 90% of her time here at Harper Park. She's very involved. Um, she runs groups here with us. 
She, we do, um, unfortunately we have to do suicide screenings um, frequently and we do those together with her. So we just make sure we've got two heads um, going on with that. She just, she does a lot of things. She's part of our clinical team where we, where we talk about the kids and we come up with interventions. So the United, this is a great new addition. Um, our administrators are part of this team as well. Our school social worker, um, Loudoun County also adopted that we all get a full-time social worker, which we had for about a week, but then she took a job somewhere else and they haven't filled her position yet. So we will have a full-time social worker that will be part of this team. And we get together monthly as a team to talk about the climate of Harper Park, how are our kids doing mental health wise, and what else can we do to help support them. Uh, we want to beef up communication with you all to let you all know what we're doing in this, in this arena. Um, we have lots of ideas for programs that we're going to implement. We're doing Wellness Wednesdays. Every Wednesday through advisory is going to be concentrated on mental health and um, socio-emotional health. So we're hoping that that's going to kind of change how kids are feeling, open the door for um, communication with them as well. And if you guys want when you're done, come around the corner you'll in the main hallway there's a computer it used to be a computer lab because we have no computer labs anymore um, and it's called the Oasis and that's where Miss Weatherford and my office is we share a space and it's just a really large place for kids to come in and relax uh, we always have soft music on the lighting is low we have good smells going they have um, soft seats they can sit in we have an art center so and for staff too sometimes they need to come in and do that um, so if you have time come around and see that and just stop by and peek in because and we welcome parents there too lots of our parent meetings will happen there just because it's a it's a nice uh, neutral place to be so that's a great addition that we're excited about and i think miss cole is next i think i am I'm Mrs. Cole. I'm the seventh grade counselor. I don't know. Do we have any seventh grade parents here? Okay, yay. <laughs> um, but last year when I was in sixth grade, all the parents were here were uh, mostly sixth grade parents. So they got the 101 and now um, mostly you guys are still sixth grade parents. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, parent-teacher conferences. This is a good way for parents and teachers and um, the counselor to get together to find out what we can do to help support your, your child. Um, the parent-teacher conferences can be initiated by the parents, by the teachers, usually not by the students. Sometimes the counselor will say, hey, we need a conference on this. And that can be because something's just not working in some way, like your child may not be understanding what they need to do, you might be concerned about behavior, concerned about academics and so we come together and we meet in the morning around 8 o'clock you'll get your four core teachers that's uh, math social studies science and English the counselor uh, the Dean usually comes after we do the welcome zone they'll pop in and if you want any other special teacher there like an art teacher or a music teacher we'll include them but you get the four core teachers and we talk and we get feedback from the teachers, like what are you seeing in this class? What are you seeing in this class? The parent gets to share, this is what my concerns are. They say everything's fine at school, but at home they're coming home and they're so anxious. They're, they're, they seem down, they cry. And a lot of times the teachers may not know this, but we need to get together and find out what we can do to, to be uh, successful. So anytime you have any kind of concerns, you can always start with um, us, the counselors, and say, yes, I think I, I think we should have a meeting, or I'm not sure what to do, and then that's something we usually suggest. Okay, so let's move on. I guess, is this the, um, wait. Oh, I guess we'll just do this. There we go. Okay, so some of the basics of what you can do to help your um, students. So, Every student should have some kind of homework routine, like habits are really, really good to form. Even for students in elementary school that they never had to do one bit of extra work uh, in elementary school, they come to middle school, they have to start developing some kind of work habits. And so it's good to establish that in sixth grade because then they can start to carry that through. And that's going to be different for every student because depending on what you do after school, you have activities. How are you going to fit that homework routine in there? Where's the, the designated space for homework? 
For some students, they need a quiet place, maybe in their bedroom. Other students, they need to be at a dining room table or a kitchen table where a parent is around to just you know kind of help move them along. So you have to know your child and decide what's best for them. Uh, but when you do that, kind of help your child develop that routine. And one thing you could do too is check that parent view, that student view with your child at least every week because they know then that you are going to be checking that, that you're going to be on top of things and you're going to be expecting them to know what they're expected to do. So you're working together. Um, and we find as counselors and the teachers that when the parents are checking the parent view and are involved that the students are doing much better because you're you're there you're on top of them they still need, they need you most of them aren't independent enough especially in sixth and seventh grade by eighth grade we really hope they're doing that all on their own but you need to do it with them um, and of course we expect success so that's just the attitude if you expect them to be successful they will be more successful it's okay for you to communicate directly with your teachers a lot of teachers really do like emails because they can get to them at some of those moments during the day um, you could even say could you give me a call but if you call here you're not going to get a teacher right away because everybody's in class but they will call you back but most of the time if you send an email you'll get a quicker response you can send an email to all the teachers, like to their core teachers. You can find out what their te who their teachers are, and you can send a blanket email um, to all of them if there's a main, con a main concern. Sometimes you want to include the counselors on those emails so we know what's going on too. And sometimes I'll have parents talk to me and say, can you help me send an email to the teachers? What should I say? And I'll say, you, um, you put it together because it's better if it comes from you but if you email it to me, I'll email it out to all the teachers and everybody else who needs to know. Because sometimes we'll help you that way. Um, and then just, like I said, reach out to us. We're here. We all want to help your students be successful. So you can always start with us, the counselors. And then stay informed with what's happening. Uh, check our websites. There's all, there, we have so much information on there. Honestly, I don't know how anybody can navigate everything that's going on. It's very, very hard. So just try. Just try. And then if you have questions, you can always just call the school, call us. We are here to help. Ms. Cole, can I say one thing? Oh, sure. You don't have to switch back. Um, just, you guys might know by now, but hopefully, uh, if not, check it out on Phoenix on, on your student parent view. Your teachers have the assignments embedded there. You click on the assignment, the worksheets are there, the handouts are there. They also have, most of them have Google Classroom. Since your kids have a Google device that they are supposed to be bringing, home, bringing back, um, most of the teachers are using that Google. So you can, you can see what they're supposed to be doing. If they say, I have no homework, there's no way that you won't be able to find out if they are supposed to be working on something that day. Where exactly do I see that? So if you go into your parent, do you have a parent yeah. view yes. account? And click on a class. Yeah. And so their assignments will come up, like click on math or whatever it may be. You'll see the assignment. You can click on um, either the name of the assignment or the grade that's there, and it will pull up the uh, resources that went along with that assignment. And the teacher websites will, sh will tell you if, I'm, if they're using Google or if they're just using Phoenix, if they're just using Student View. So if you visit the teacher websites via our website, just find their name, it'll tell you all my stuff is in Google or I use only Parent View. And you should, we're trying to streamline it so it's not so hard because there is a lot of different entities that people are using, so we're trying to streamline that. But check that out and if you don't find the answer, then just email the teacher and they will give it to you. Okay, so what does my students' day look like, uh, especially for sixth grade parents? They've all, you had your schedules early this year. Most of you came to load the locker. You got to really explore some things with your students. Uh, but just to kind of refresh you or go over a basic day, uh, we always start with homeroom. Um, the students come from the welcome zones. We have the eighth grade up in the auditorium. We have seventh grade in the cafeteria, and we have sixth grade in the gym areas. So between 8 and 8.20, actually, uh, the students have that time to meet with teachers if they need to. So your counselor and your dean were, were there, and we help them get passes to meet with their teachers. This is, gives them a time to get extra uh, help, to get extra work done. Sometimes they have to make up something. If they've been sick, they can come and do that in the morning. So 8 to 8.20. Um, and then 
we go to homeroom, they have about 10 minutes and we go to homeroom and then they have 20 minutes of homeroom every day unless it's a Wednesday and on Wednesdays we have advisory every Wednesday so the students would go to homeroom, we're only there for announcements about five minutes and then we start our day and our advisory is embedded between our second or our um, first and second block or our fifth and sixth block. So our students would go to the first or fifth block, then they actually go to their eighth block teacher, because that's where we're having advisory with our eighth block teacher, and then they go back to their second or sixth block, and that's on, on a Wednesday. And then I think Ms. Harper said, well, once a month we're gonna be doing a wellness Wednesday that's gonna come from the Unified Mental Health Team. So then we start our classes, they're about an hour and a half. We have four classes on each day. Uh, that's called the block scheduling. We have three lunch, lunch periods now. Um, they are basically sixth, seventh, and eighth, but we're trying to call them like one, two, and three because we do have different students eating in the different lunch, lunch shifts now. That's to balance things out, it helps with the schedule. So during this day, um, for for sixth graders, your students have English every day. That's one thing that sixth graders have that we don't have in seventh and eighth grade. That's the only class you get every day. And then in seventh grade, you just have it one day, um, and then that opens up another elective for you. Let's see. Um, oh, and then your students have a resource. That's 45 minutes, and then they piggyback with their elective, and that happens in sixth and seventh grade. So you have 45 minutes of resource or spectrum if your child's taking spectrum, and then you have 45 minutes of your music elective, but if you're in seventh grade, you'll have music or an art choice. And then in eighth grade, you have a full block of resource uh, because things do, do change. Um, and then Excuse let's me. see. Yes, question? What's the, what's the advisory? What is the advisory? Advisory is something that every school um, has some type of an advisory where we com uh, communicate and work with students based on your school plan of what your themes are and we talk about things related to like character, building good skills to make you good human beings. Is that like, that's just a general overview. Wellness Wednesdays are going to be focusing specifically on things related to helping us with mental health issues. And they'll just be like things to promote good self-esteem, um, you know, confidence, stuff like that. Does that help? And I'm, because I, I don't know what all the lessons are, but I think we're going to be posting the lessons. They are posted. On, all of last year's yeah. are posted under, on the um, school tab. Yeah. And this year they'll be posted yeah. as we do them. But we'll do study skills. The month of October is related to um, anti-bullying things. So it goes a different theme every month, yeah. like Ms. Cole said. Right now the kids are reviewing our PBIS program, our PBIS, which Mr. Misick will talk about. Um, so our expectations for that, getting them set up for the year, just knowing so they know what, what to expect and what we expect of them behaviorally. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let's see. I think that's it for that. This is just a sample of the clubs and activities. We really want your students to get involved. So we have after school clubs. Usually they're on Wednesdays and Thursdays. This is just a sample. Some of these may not be available this year. Depends on, we have to have a teacher sponsor. And there will be additional ones here uh, besides this. We are gonna be having a drama uh, club a drama um, and that's and we don't are, have a walking club and we've had a coding club too so that's something that's not on here but we'll see you're gonna have to just wait to see what comes out that should be in the next couple weeks our activity bus buses start in October and that's when the clubs start oh, and I think you said there's a is there a um, yes yeah. right yep. there are tricky for parents because things have been going along pretty smoothly for the past 11 years in most people's cases and then suddenly what they've been doing that works really well often stops working so parents can find that really frustrating and one of the things that they need to understand is that 
The middle school years are what I call the middle school construction project. So kids are working on developing three things that they need to become an adult. They need an adult body, an adult brain, and an adult identity. And that sort of creates the perfect storm for a lot of change to be happening at once. And the best advice I have for parents during this time is to change their role from being a manager, sometimes they're micromanagers, to becoming an assistant manager. And that means that they're really, really letting kids take more risks and become more independent. And they're operating more as a sounding board instead of someone who is dictating how everything should be done all the time. It seems to work much better for middle schoolers. This is a tough change to make. And I've been there myself. I have a daughter who's in high school and one a son who's in middle school. So I know that it's a really difficult change. It helps if you remove yourself and think about the best manager you ever had and some of the things that they did for you. And usually what I hear parents say is that they gave me freedom to make my own choices, they held me accountable, they communicated clearly. Um, just go through this exercise of thinking about the best manager you ever had and what that was like. And then you've written your own job description while your kid is in middle school. So you can think about implementing some of those things for your own child. And that's a good way to kind of give yourself a roadmap for the next few years. Um, you probably have some younger kids in the house who are looking at you saying, I want that too. I want the same freedom. But I think it's fair to say to your kids um, that middle school is a delineator. And when you reach a certain age and a certain grade, you begin to change the way that things are done. So if you can look at it that way as sort of a marking point in the sand where you're going to make some changes, it helps. Just back on the clubs, um, oh. I saw sports, mm -hmm. um, team sports, team sports, and I know that um, volleyball. There was something this summer that I guess kids needed to be needed to go to in order to participate in volleyball. Um, will we get you know now now that we're in the school, will we get notices like that? Because I only heard about it because somebody else I know's child was interested, and she happens to have another middle, middle schooler, you know, older middle schooler. Right. So. Our team sports is just like just sports after school. It's not any kind of team sports. If you want team sports, they have to go through um, like parks and recreation. So when we do team sports, they just set up different places where the kids can play sports like soccer on the field, maybe basketball or maybe <coughs> volleyball, but it's just to have fun and play. Does that make sense? So organized sports are not yeah. through the school system. Yeah, the organized They're sports. They're just yeah. the parks and rec or Central Valley Youth Football or the basketball yeah. league. So those, that's where Does they, that make they're, sense? they're in charge of all of it. They use our facilities, but, but it doesn't go through, there's no coaches here. It's not through the school like it is in high school. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's unfortunate because I know there are other school systems that do have them, but we, we don't. Ours is just like after school, like rec. Um, so, Par parents, basic social emotional, just uh, to piggyback, I guess, off that um, little YouTube that we saw. Again, we're, our whole goal is to helping our child to create those habits that they'll be able to be the best managers of themselves as we move through middle school. But it's really important to still keep your hands in and on the things that they are doing. Um, just some of the things to, to think about. Uh, always just be open and you guys probably know this, you know, just be open to their questions and try to get them to say, answer in ways that are more open-ended. So, because you get a lot of that yes, no, maybe so, and it, it really is hard for parents. Mm -hmm. The main thing I want to address is like technology. We know technology is here, it's here to stay, but we also see a lot of issues with technology, especially as counselors. So much of the bullying or just the distress or the meanness seems to work through technology. So we're always really trying to encourage the parents to limit the technology. Uh, at night, I hear kids are like sleeping with their phones. The kids are up on their phones in the middle of the night. They're not really getting good sleep. And it's okay to take the phones away, have a, a parking place before they go to bed. Um, and that's again another good habit to form because they are doing it and they are they have sites and they have things that it's really hard for the parents to manage so learn everything you can about technology and how to keep your kids safe on technology and we usually will do parent cof coffees on technology safety too so just stay tuned 
we will bring you more information. But it is hard. The kids know more than we know. And it really makes it hard to stay on top of it. And then just uh, remember to reach out to us if you can ask us anything. We can guide you in so many different ways. And, and we're there to help you. So that's that for me. I think we'll go on to the next person here. Um, hi, I'm the 8th grade counselor. My name is Jude Misick, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about um, technology. So um, it's a bit of a kind of an unknown thing for a lot of people. There's so many new apps and so many new um, you know, ways kids communicate or get online. Um, so it's, it, it's probably changing every single day, um, and you guys are probably seeing it with, with your son or daughter. Um, but a few things we wanted to talk to you about today, um, as it says up there, in order to protect and guide your child, Learn as much as you can. So try to dig in and learn about if they're really into Fortnite. What is this about, and who are they playing with? Um, for example, uh, you know, Miss Harper and I were talking about Fortnite, and she said she has a habit of just putting on headphones and saying, "Who is this?" and, and asking the person who her, her child is playing with. And if it's somebody she knows, it's fine. But if it's not, then she makes sure she kind of regulates that. So try to be as aware um, and involved with that as as you can. Um, for example, so. But there's, a, a, if they have a new app on their phone, make sure you try to learn what this is about and try to research it online as much as you can. That, that would probably be a good thing to try to try to do as much as possible. Um, there is obviously cyberbullying out there. Um, this did not exist back in the day, but this is pretty prevalent um, in middle schoolers, high schoolers, um, and it's something that can really impact your child uh, negatively. Obviously, so try to try to listen as much as you can to them if they're saying something about anything going online. Um, you can certainly bring it to us. We will always listen and try to help you as much as we can, but. Uh, there's a bit of a gray area when, when anything's happening online. We kind of it's kind of out of our jurisdiction, jurisdiction a little bit here. So it's something we want you to be aware. Of course, you can always bring it to the school if it impacts them here at school. But it's going if it's going on, um, you know, outside of school or online, it's a bit of a gray area. So certainly call us with questions, and we will help you as much as we can. But just kind of be aware of that when it comes to cyberbullying or anything going on online. So do you know what Snapchat, Musically, uh, and Instagram are? Finsta. Um, Fortnite, uh, there's endless amounts of stuff. Um, so it's, I don't know all this, all the details to this, but what I do know about this, uh, so Snapchat, I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware of kids being able to, to post things on Snapchat and, and communicate that way. Uh, but Musical.ly is something most kids, I was just talking to Ms. Harper about this, most kids kind of drop this or stop this around sixth grade. Um, and it's something where they can kind of uh, lip sync to a, a, a part of a song. And sometimes the songs can be pretty inappropriate. Um, Instagram, a lot of people know Instagram, but then Finsta is like fake Instagram. And the way you can kind of see that is if it says in their Instagram post or the words on there on, uh, with their picture, it says at their, their Finsta account, so like at Finsta. So their name and then at Finsta or something like that. If you see that, then I would click on that because that then brings you into this underworld of Instagram apparently uh, that exists. So I don't know, who knows what they'll come up with next. So it's things like this that I would honestly, Google searches are your friend here. So I would just Google what is Finsta and you'll probably learn a lot about that. Because your chances are your child knows a bit about what Finsta is and all this stuff is. Um, so try to just get involved as much as you can and learning as much as you can about this. It, it, it's probably going to be pretty exhausting, but it's probably better for you to know than to not know what your kid's involved with. Um, and then uh, you can link all the devices. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this, uh, you know, to your iPad or to one device. So you can kind of keep track. Uh, there's something called Bark that I was just made aware of. Uh, I think it, it's a minimal cost uh, app for you to have, but you can put it on your, your child's device and your own device, and then it'll categorize if anything kind of comes up, anything about um, you know uh, inappropriate behavior uh, in certain categories or, or concerning things like saying something that's of suicidal ideation or something like that or, or, or kind of adult things going on, sexually explicit things. So that might then make you, it should make you aware of what's going on or what your kid is looking at or posting out there. So um, Bark is just one example, apparently a really new example of, of ways for you to try to track your child's uh, activity um, online. So again, as much as you can, maybe Google even how can I track my kid's you know, activity online. Uh, things like that will probably help you kind of stay on top of it as much as you can. So is it bullying? Um, so this is something that, you know, bullying is, we take it very seriously at Harper Park, and I'm sure every school, I, I know every school in Loudoun County does, every school across the nation, it's something that every school is aware of, but here at Harper Park we want to make sure we are on top of things. So if we ever hear of a student saying something about bullying, or a teacher said they heard something about it, or, um, you know, parent calls, uh, you know, we are definitely going to be taking this seriously and, and making sure we look into helping out and, and making sure we 
corrective behaviors and make sure kids feel supported uh, in every way possible. But sometimes bullying is just a word that's thrown out there. Um, you know, there are rude, rude people and rude behavior, mean people, and there's a little bit of a difference. As you can see, it says when someone says or does something unintentionally or not hurtful, uh, and they do it once, that's just rude. That's not bullying behavior. And if they um, say or do something intentionally hurtful, that's not nice behavior at all. We don't want that to happen here at school or outside of school. But that is, that's typically kind of categorized as mean. But then if it is something that is intentionally hurtful and they keep doing it, and especially if that person who it's happening to says, please stop, then that's where it becomes bullying. Um, you know, any one of these, we will gladly get involved. The counselor, the deans, the administrators, teachers, we will make sure if we see rude or mean behavior or bullying behavior, we're going to make sure we say, you know, what's going on here and try to look into it and make sure we put a stop to it as much as possible. But we also want to empower your, your child. They're in sixth, seventh, or eighth grade. So they're up of the age now to start saying, okay, I can say to the other kid doing this to me, I don't like that, please stop. And then, you know, if they keep doing it, um, you know, ignoring it might be a strategy as well, but if it keeps happening, then certainly they can tell an adult. But that's the, the step we want your child to take is to say, all right, I'm, I'm empowered. I, I am my own, my own person now. I can say, I, I'm going to come to an adult. If they come to you, of, of course, bring it to our attention and we can look into it and help you out in any way possible. And any questions, guys, throughout all this, please uh, feel free to ask. Is there a zero tolerance policy around bullying? Or I mean, do we have a zero tolerance? Is that the official? So I'm, this is my first year here at Harper Park, so I don't know the, the, all the, the details. I think the about. county stands is zero tolerance. Yeah. And the only thing I can say about that is we have to know about it um, to do something about it. So when we are made aware of it, absolutely we step into action, whatever that may be, whether it's just counselor, whether it goes straight to the dean, whether it goes straight to an AP. Um, so yeah, I mean, we would never say we tolerate a little bit more. I mean, there's. We don't want any bullying in the school. It happens. So as soon as you know about it, let us know, and we will definitely get right on it. Thank you. So bullying prevention uh, in middle school. So bullying is the repeated use of one's strengths, um, of one's strength or status for the purpose of intimidating or injuring another person. Um, so that's that's uh, what we consider bullying behavior. Um, again, it, it would be helpful if you could explain to your child, you know, what is mistreatment or mean or rude behavior, what is bullying. Um, and might go over strategies to try to help them combat it. Of course, they can see their counselor or, or a teacher or anybody in the school to try to talk to about how do I go about you know, letting this other student know I don't appreciate their behavior and it's not acceptable. Um, we will gladly help out in that as well. Um, so anti-bullying efforts at Harper Park. So in sixth grade, we do bullying basics, what it is, how to stop it, and what to do if it happens. In seventh grade, the main kind of theme is, is to help the kids out is, is sexual harassment. We go over that. Um, and in eighth grade, cyber and online bullying, emotional consequences of bullying. So each, each grade level kind of has a different focus uh, for each, each of the kids. And then seventh and eighth grade, there's going to be a Campbell uh, presentation, It's My Life. Um, and we just kind of set that up. Um, and so. Yeah, we've done it before. It's, um, they come in and there's like a big, there's like three screens in the auditorium. And there's usually, we have a theme about, um, so it always has a little bit about anti bullying in there, respect and empowerment, things like that. And so that kind of is sort of a culmination of our anti-bullying program. Thank you. Um, and then sixth and seventh uh, grade do same sky presentation, which is about um, acceptance uh, of, of others. And then all the students get uh, Alliance, so PBIS, um, our PBIS for our framework is called Alliance. Legacy, which is our advisory uh, lessons, making connections with kids. Then the Wellness Wednesdays, which we mentioned. Month of October, for example, is Bullying Prevention Month, so weekly lessons and advisory. Um, and then there's staff development um, amongst our staff here to look for what to look for and help them prevent. Um, and then online reporting. There's an online reporting form on the main Harper Park website. Uh, so in, instead of just calling us or, or emailing us, you can it, a student can report it online or a parent can report it online. Um, and so Harper Park Middle School PBIS ex expectations. PBIS is Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports. It's a framework that the county has adopted the last few years and has every school have a framework that fits their school and what their students' needs are at the school. Um, and so the three kind of bu buzzword sayings that we have at our school are be there, be ready, and be kind. The students all know this, the eighth graders especially, but the sixth graders are, are learning about this. Um, and it's really about you know being positive. Um, and, and we want to reward positivity and good behavior. And so we have some things called uh, eye tickets. You'll see on the right it says in the classroom. Um, and I've given out a few of these already, and I know teachers do this a lot. 
So there are little tickets that we can give out to students saying that basically we caught you doing something good or being positive. Um, and so it's, it's kind of like a little, little way of recognizing that positive behavior that might trigger in them saying, okay, I, I'm, I'm not going unnoticed here because uh, all, all the students have a lot of great stuff going on. Some have some struggles here or there, but everybody has something positive to offer. So we want to you know, continue to preach the be there, be ready, and be kind, but then also do little rewards um, like this. Uh, where, where then they, they get enough of these and I think they can go get um, a little uh, prize or reward uh, from, the, from the main office. So it's just something that we want to kind of continue to encourage them to do is be positive to each other um, and continue to, to respect others. And you guys can see the details in here. Um, uh, it, it, it's in the cafeteria, in the common areas, the hallways, the locker room. And we have high expectations, as I think Ms. Cole said. So if we have high expectations for them, we hope, we hope that they can meet those. Uh, and we want to make sure we're, we're doing that in every aspect, the restrooms, the bus stops, uh, on the buses, uh, and everywhere, so, okay? All right, I think that's the end of my slide. Ms. Yeah. Levins, I believe you're up. And just to mention to what she's up there is our motto this year is be kind, and Philippe, um, I actually wore this year today, be kind, we're really focusing on that aspect as our motto. Last year was called You Matter, and uh, so we're still kind of keeping that in there too, and be kind, so that's our big focus. Yeah, thank you. All right, so I think most of you belong to me because I'm the sixth grade counselor. <laughs> um, so it's nice to meet you all. Um, I'm glad we get to meet face to face. I like to put faces to names, so maybe we can chat a little bit after this. But um, so my name is Miss Blevins, Anna Blevins. Um, I am new to LCPS and Harper Park. So bear with me as I'm getting acclimated, and I'll help you guys get acclimated as well. Um, my background is at high school, so I know all about Finsta and Instagram and all that crazy stuff. So if you have questions about that, which <laughs> it's like I don't even want to know all this stuff, but I do. So, um, but yeah. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm super friendly, I swear. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about career and college readiness. Um, I'm going to read from the slide because Ms. Harper made a few changes um, recently, and I haven't seen the le latest copy. So. Um, the sixth graders will, uh, students begin to explore their future and possibilities, including specialized high schools and setting goals. So we'll have a few different things um, throughout the year here. And, um, oh, sorry, I'm going too fast. <laughs> okay, so we'll have a few different things throughout the year um, where we'll go into resources or advisories and kind of talk to kids about what we're going to do over the next couple of years, um, setting goals and whatnot. Um, what options might be uh, available to them and what they can work towards for high school. Um, in seventh grade, they can look forward to collaboration between counselor and the facts teacher, um, and some extensive co college and career exploration lessons. Um, and that's the family and consumer science teacher. Facts is family and consumer science, so uh, a lot of vocational stuff there. Uh, create a six-year academic plan in seventh grade, and then in eighth grade, you can do the college certs via Naviance, or Naviance, however you want to say it, um, selecting specific parameters to find their match. Um, you'll get to visit a GMU October 10th and 11th, um, and then meet with the high school counselors to make effective course selections for ninth grade. So that's kind of the long-term plan there for middle school. Um, if you want to take a picture of this slide, this is our contact information. It's also listed on the LCPS website. So if you wanted to go to the website um, and then select Harper Park's website, it'll have a tab at some point that says the counselors, and then you can go directly to uh, my page, and I have a little bit of information about myself, and um, my contact information will be on there. Um, I would recommend emailing me so I can kind of like manage everything that's incoming um, I'm often inundated with a bunch of different things going on at the same time, so being able to figure that out on an email um, it makes it a little easier for me. But I'm also open to phone calls, so just leave me a message and I can probably get back to you quickly. Um, let's go ahead. Yeah, so our parent liaison is Nelly Negron. Um, she assists, assists family with uh, community-based services, food, clothing, supplies, medical care. She's awesome. She does a little bit of everything. Um, helps to facilitate parent school communication, supports parents in becoming more involved in their children's education. And she is at Harper Park Tuesday and Thursday from 9 to 3.30. She has an office in the main office, which, how do I explain? It's like next to... They would just go to the main office. Oh, they can just ask, yeah. yeah. But she, you can leave messages and email her any day. She, she's really good about getting back. She's at, she shares um, Heritage High School, so she does them and then us, but she answers emails and phone calls at both places every day. And some other upcoming dates, um, just stuff that we're doing this year so far. 
um, October 10th and 11th, the 8th grade are going to GMU. Um, October 16th and 17th, 7th grade are going to the museum. Um, October 19th is Same Sky for 6th and 7th. Um, also, how do I explain what Same Sky is? Um, you already did a little bit. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then October 24th and 25th, 6th grade trip to Gettysburg. Um, October 6th, Neil McNary, McNair, McNairney, uh, instilling grit in your children. I think that that is like going to be super awesome for, especially in 6th grade, learning how to not give up after uh, trying maybe once or twice and not seeing the results that you want. So being able to persevere through tough times, that might be something interesting for them. Um, November 30th, Beth Weatherford, a school psychologist, we just met here a little bit ago, uh, restorative practice for parents. Um, December 7th, Megan Marshall, student assistant specialist in the substance abuse prevention. So, yeah, take a picture of the slides if you want, um, just to have it something for quick reference. Um, I think some of these are listed on the LCPS website as well. We'll post this entire presentation on the school counseling site. Yeah. You'll have all the slides. So I didn't catch oh, what same fine. sky was. Okay, so go ahead, Judy. <laughs> it's it. um, a theater organization that comes from a place to be, which um, is an organization that works lots with kids with autism, but some more um, severe disabilities. And they, um, every year, create a production, and they travel around to different middle schools, high schools, elementary schools. And it's basically about inclusion. Okay. And, and the, the actors are students with disabilities. So it's really cool, and our kids really enjoy it, and they get a lot out of it. So um, we try to get them every year. Last year, the dates didn't line up, so we're going to do sixth and seventh grade. Sometimes it's just sixth grade people, but it's a good thing. Yeah, sounds really interesting to me. So, yeah. So, what kind of questions do you have for us? Or yes, I will travel with the kids up until eighth grade, and then we send them off to here. All right, well, I'm super excited to be working with you guys. Um, so feel free to reach out if you ever have any questions or concerns or want me to explain something that they're into that you don't really know what it is. I'll probably figure it out, so. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, there's plenty of coffee, I'm sure. I don't think a lot of people wanted the coffee. I swear it's pretty good for school coffee, so. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Thank you.